guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike. I am Jay. And we are about to get so deep inside of Halloween Ends that you won't know where Jason Blum ended and your butt began. Hey, is that your prostate? No, it's just the beginning of your anus. Just us talking movies. So let's go trick or treat and let's go fucking drinking. Let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never ends. Halloween never ends. Halloween never ends. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you guys something real quick. We are going to get deep inside this movie, but not only are we going to do that tonight. Whatever we forget, whatever we miss, and we are going to forget stuff. For sure. Because there's a lot of stuff that for happens. Show. And if you've just been following this channel for Halloween ends and whatnot, we've come to the end of a journey with this trilogy. We've come to an end, but we've not just been doing this. We've been doing this for 10 years. So let me just say something really quick. This is the time right now that for I you. would unsubscribe. Probably. <laughs> it's probably the best choice you can yeah. possibly make as a human being. But this is the time right this second to go and not only click the subscribe button, but make sure you click the bell and the notified notion. Because listen to me, we don't only do Halloween. We do Evil Dead. We do Friday the 13th. We do anything horror. We talk other movie news and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I do not want you guys to go into the darkness. I gave the movie a 7.5. I enjoyed it. But I felt like if you're going into the movie hoping for a really solid wrap up to this trilogy and even more so this franchise, which it's not, it's not the end. This is Batman. This is James Bond. Yeah. This is going on for forever. You will probably be disappointed, but as a standalone movie that tried some wild shit and went punk rock as fuck, I feel like they had a fun time and it was a solid entry into the Halloween franchise. Non-spoiler over for me. Yeah. Um, Popsicles. Why the fuck did you all put him in a goddamn metal incinerator grinder bullshit at the end? What the <laughs> fuck were you thinking? Goddamn, Charles. <laughs> Stay in the future and do X-Men stuff. Don't come over here and give us all your dandy... I do. Okay. Listen, listen to what I'm saying to you, okay? I was having fun with it. I really was. I actually enjoyed this movie to a point. And then when the ending happened, you know what? I'm just going to get into this. Because this is really what annoyed the fuck out of me. The ending with Michael Myers and Laurie Strode was so unceremoniously done to Michael Myers, all right? I didn't like the fact that they slit his goddamn throat, then she slit his fucking wrist. They do this, like, goddamn uh, where the red fern grows shit, where they all, like, come in, the townspeople carry him over like a dying hero, and they throw into the fucking meat grinder the metal thing at the end. I'm like, what the shit? I felt like that song, Pink. Run just as fast as I can. To the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, I, I felt, I, I really, I felt so, like, um, unsatisfied with that ending. I, I was like, listen, and again, I know that everyone's going to have what they want the ending of this movie to be, for sure. But I was like, dude, I mean, there's no way or no reason why you didn't, you, you shouldn't have had Laurie Strode going out in a humongous, awesome death scene with Michael, and then he just, and again, when I say unceremoniously dies on the goddamn fucking Gordon Ramsay fucking kitchen table or countertop, I'm like, what the fuck? I, that, that's what I was like, man, I, I don't know if I'd done that. Like, listen, and I know that they weren't going to please everybody, but at the same time, you could have had a, a longer fight scene and then it could have worked up to this epic level of fireworks and then you have Lori going out with Michael in some cool-ass way. And if you wanted to kill Michael in that way, fine, man. That's it. But, like, putting him into a fucking meat grinder and making him baloney later on, I think that's, like, it's it, to me, it just felt like a cheap out. I, and because, I mean, of course, I mean, just like in H2O, and I wasn't a fan of H2O as an ending, you chop his head off. I was, I didn't like that either, and I guess for some people, it felt the same kind of way. It just felt like such a gut punch, like it was, that's it. That's well, all you get. And we've been a channel that has always, for the past few months, we've been like, hey, I actually would like to see Michael win. I think that would be a yeah. surprise scenario. I think that would be shocking. So, and again, I just to, just to reiterate it. I said kids. Like alien. <laughs> Just to reiterate one more time, Jay gave it a 6.5. 6.5, yeah. I gave it a 7.5. So it's not a terrible movie. enjoyed the movie. Yeah. But now we're going to get into the intricacies of it. And jumping right into the end of the movie, how that all worked out. Like, the my only, like, I was absolutely loving the, I didn't love everything about it, but I was loving the movie a lot up until that very end scene. And then you get to the kitchen scene that we're talking about. And this is my number one problem with the entire film. When he ripped his hand out and grabbed her throat, I was so pumped 
because I was like, oh shit, he's not done. He ain't done. Yeah. We're about to have some surprises happen here. He pulled, Get up, you son of a bitch, because Lobus loves you. <laughs> he pulls his hand out. I got so pumped, I yelped. My daughter, or my 12-year-old, who I took to see with me, went, Dad, shh. Because I literally went, oh, so he, yeah. He ain't dead. Cause he ain't dead. And it, it's, I, as far as the character goes, I get that we want Lori to have a happy ending, because she's been through so much. It's just like Sidney Prescott. Speak for you, yourself, dog. You can't have Sidney Prescott be the killer in a movie, because it just knocks down all the other movies. So I get why they didn't do that. Yeah. But... I, I just wanted to go out with a hero ending. Yeah, and I get that too. Yeah. Uh, but like, so, but I also understand where they're coming from. Let this character yeah. have some happiness in her guess, life. Yeah. But still, yeah, in that moment, when I thought, oh, this can't be the end, right? This can't be the end. And he rips his hand out and he grabs her throat. I was like, yes, here we go. My number one biggest problem with the entire movie is what happens next. Mm. He, he's, he's pinned down. So stupid. She's been through all this. She's threatened suicide. She's been through all the stuff that Michael's done to her. And then she has him pinned down. And all he gets one hand loose. He All he has is one hand. And he grabs and her by the... And he's bleeding out, by the way. Yeah. And he grabs her by the throat. And she gives up. That was my That's biggest dumb. problem with the movie. When she goes, just do it. I'm done. I'm like, Lori Stroh would not do that. She would not give up at that moment. And she just goes, I'm yeah. done. Well, my only thing is maybe she knew Allison was there. Maybe. Maybe. But, and then the next scene bro- bothered me because Allison comes in and I really needed Allison to have the scene. So I enjoyed that. But Allison comes in, just breaks his arm over the table. Yeah. And it was so quick. She's Steven and all conf- that shit. Yeah. It was so quick and confusing. Like, Michael was in the fight, and then out of nowhere, he was out of it. And all of a sudden, he just gives up, and they and they slit his wrists, and they bleed him out. And oh, yeah. I, I hated I, that scene. That was the one scene I really well, hated. Again, it goes back to me. Like, it, again, it just feels so unceremonious with the character, with everything they've gone through. And they do have a flashback moment when Laurie starts reliving all the things from Halloween 1. But, dude... There was so much potential in that scene. There was so much more that could have been explored and cracked open and had a great fucking time with. And I just ultimately feel like they were like, well, how do we kill Michael for good? Well, I guess we'll just throw him in the goddamn meat grinder and say, Hadou. And then they do it. <laughs> and they Hadouken his ass into oblivion. I did not like that at all. I, and again, I, and I will stick to my guns on this. I feel like a perfect ending in a perfect world. And again, this is my opinion. I think it was your opinion for a while, too. Uh, and most... You let Van Helsing go out with Dracula. You let him fight to the death because at the end of the day, you know, it's an immovable force meets uh, immovable force meets an unstoppable object or some shit like that. So I, I feel like those clashing like that, that's exactly what it should have been like. And then, you know, neither one can win. And then you have them both get locked in this uh, struggle for, uh, you know, life. And they both ultimately want to kill each other and, and they both go down. So I feel like it was a huge missed opportunity in in the ending of this movie. Now, saying that, the one thing about this movie that, uh, and I I know that some people, maybe a lot of you all, were like, I don't know about that. And I was the same way. It it was like fucking rolling the dice. Is like when Michael transferred his sexualness to Corey. (laughs) Which... Uh, and, and I, you know, listen, what I thought originally that they were doing, and I swear to God, this is what I thought. Uh, when when Corey first first meets Michael in the uh, in the sewer, which is weird anyway, they dragged him in there. I don't even know. It was gonna like suck his dick or eat him. I don't even know what he. That's just weird that he stole. It a was body. weird that he picked. Like, him why up. did you steal a body? That felt I, weird. I, I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so Corey wakes up and, and they had this confrontation and uh, uh, Michael grabs him by the throat and there, there's this moment where Corey starts reliving what happened to him in 2019 and it's like there's this transference of energy or. Uh, like some kind of um, what I really felt was happening was that because um, Corey gets re- like renewed with this kind of evil, but I, I, I was it because what I was thinking was like all right, and I and I literally told my wife I was like you know what it is I was like they're going this route that Michael is like a psychic vampire like he feeds off of whatever little nugget of evil that you have in you and he feeds it so that he can use you as a minion to bring him people so that he can get fucking stronger. Like, and he's going to use you until you're used up. I, I thought it was going to be like, he's a battery pack. I thought Corey was going to be like literally a battery pack that Michael was typing into to like rejuvenate himself. Yeah. And they didn't ultimately do, I mean, I would have done that. Like, and cause they've already, established, Michael up to Halloween, 2018 Halloween kills to me, Michael's fucking supernatural. 
And it, it, like, that's a new goddamn power. And if they introduced it in this movie, I'd be like, that makes sense. Just keep a battery pack around you, like a fucking like oxygen mask, because you smoke too many cigarettes. Like I gotta have an oxygen mask. <laughs> There's so much to go into there. I, I sh for one second, I want to retread back to the ending. So let's knock out the ending part of it, because the, and again, this is why I say we're doing a live stream on Monday where we're gonna get deep into everything. We're just gonna kind of cover this like broadly right now, but like just real quick before we go into that, I want to go back to the end. Yeah. Like that end scene when it happens. We saw so much of it in the TV spots in the trailers. Mm. Like, I expected a lot more out of that final battle scene. And there is extra stuff, but there's not enough. We were wrong, by the way. We called the... I didn't even think that what we saw in the trailer was going to be the end of the movie. And that winds up being I, the end yeah, of the movie. Yeah, I had a lot of crazy theories about it. But it, it really was, as you guys know, the penultimate fight scene. A, it happened so fast. B, you go right from this extremely intimate scene to two seconds later. Everybody shows up. By the way, the Haddonfield police team has a really late response time. Mm. Everybody shows up, and then in 20 minutes, they're like, uh, by the way, let's call all of Haddonfield. It's like they have a fucking uh, bat beeper where it's like, hey, all of Haddonfield, meet us at the Winn-Dixie parking lot. We're going to kill Michael Myers. And everybody shows up like it's a goddamn Garth Brooks concert. No, that, yeah, that's my that was... Yeah, they, they, it, was like, uh, it was like they heard on the internet a Black Friday sale was going on. <laughs> the scene was cool. If you're going to kill Michael Myers, throwing him into a meat grinder is a really cool idea. And the way they did that, and it leaves no doubt because they just squished and ate up like the fucking Langoliers. That scene was cool. But I just felt like it was the 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 way it played out was kind of broken. So that was my biggest gripe of the film. Well, also, you look at the fact that it's not it's not it doesn't look good. I mean, the, the special effects are fine. Like, they look great. I'm talking about that was dope. It, it looks very cult like. And, and I know what they were going for, but it doesn't land. The fact that this town has been saturated by evil, and they try to play this in the very beginning of the movie, that yeah. this town has been saturated by the evil of Michael Myers because, you know, they're, they're establishing the fact that Michael Myers is a man, but what lives inside of him is this pure and simply evil, like Loomis said, like this pure essence of evil. And so it's saturated the town. Now that he's not been around, but he's caused all this disturbance, it's saturated everything. And so these They abandoned their own idea. Yeah, but these motherfuckers show up, you know, like, you know, Van Halen's going to play down the street, and they show up and they carry him on... You know, the whole... Th it just came off as corny. Yeah. It was cheesy. And, and like, like, listen, I watched that... What's, what's that movie called where they fucking sacrifice people on a hill? It, um, uh... The one with Nick Cage in it. No, no, not that one. Um, the one that was uh, supposed to be gross. Midsommar. It was very Midsommar. It was like, oh. Yeah. They, they just didn't have time. They didn't have like, time. Yeah. In the, they didn't have the running time in the movie to really let that scene make sense. They were just like, hey, I showed up and they were like, this is not how we do things. He's like, it's how we do things tonight. And then like yeah. all of a sudden the whole town has a bat phone and shows up to That it. just felt like, it, it felt rushed as fuck. I don't know why it felt like that, it but did. it did feel like there weren't enough, or maybe there wasn't enough time to film certain yeah. scenes to make it make sense, but they took his mask off yet again. Come on, guys. Fucking stop oh, doing that fucking shit, all right? Listen, I understand it was a big, but, you know, at this point it's like, all right, we get it, but, you know, there... Just fucking don't do it. Like I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's a, it should be a written rule in a cod. Don't take his fucking mask off every two seconds when you feel like you need to do it because That's... we've already seen part of his fucking face. We don't need to see his fucking burn. I don't need to see it. And by the way, at the end of the movie, you're gonna keep his fucking mask laying on your table like a goddamn heirloom. Now it's like a fucking uh, what it was it called a paperweight. It's gonna be on your fucking table, and then the "Don't Fear the Reaper" song comes on, dude. I feel like the indie. Like, that part didn't that, bother me at all. I what, thought it was kind of cool. That was like, dumb. Why the fuck would you keep it? He murdered your daughter. He murdered half of her friends. Why the fuck would you keep that I shit? I think because it felt like it was a part of his power. So, like, as long as she's in control of it. Kind uh, of well, idea. that's true. I mean, I would just burn it with him or throw it in the fucking grinder. They should but, have thrown it in the grinder. But at the same time, if you even are trying to say his mask is what gives him his power, get the fuck out of here with your Power Ranger mm -hmm. shit, okay? We're not Mighty Morphicon. I'm with you, though, on the fucking... One of the, and like, and I, I really, I like, I enjoyed the fuck of this movie up, up to this point. The kitchen scene is the, is the one thing that really chapped my ass as Halloween it. fam. When she pulls off his mask, I hated that. I fucking it's like hated taking, it's, 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 it's that. It's like taking his underwear off and saying, hey, look Dude, how small his wiener is. <laughs> they, if they would have just showed 25% less of his face, it would have been perfect. But they showed 25% too much. When he has that weird fucking, like, I'm in a corn cover band fucking <laughs> yeah, hair he hanging out. I'm like, 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 he's he's about poetry. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Why would you show, like, they showed just enough of his face to piss me off. Like, 
Stop showing his fucking face. Not like, as bad as stop. Halloween 5 where he had a ponytail, but right. it was close. Um, I can't believe I'm about to say this, dude, but I actually enjoyed Michael Myers and Corey teaming up to kill people. I thought it was pretty fucking rad, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Like, I thought they did that really well. You are removed from Halloween fans. <laughs> I just... I, as, as you a, are removed. As a standalone you lose, dream, son. it was pretty neat, man. I, I You know what? <laughs> I didn't... They, I didn't, I didn't, I, I wouldn't have done it, no, but they dude, did it well. You know why? Because it comes across as Batman and Robin. That's why I don't like it. If it was fucking Jason whooping that ass on the outside in the pool, and then Michael comes out behind that girl and fucking kills her, I'd be like, that makes sense. But it's just this, and look, the guy, the the, the actor, or the, or the character, Corey, wasn't annoying. I thought he was going to be annoying. I thought he was going to be like this fucking emo motherfucker that's going to walk around and be like, I don't like I don't like anybody. I felt like a young Jake Gyllenhaal. And I like black clothes and black music and death metal. He wasn't like that. He was a normal kid, and I kind of liked him for that. But at the same time, that particular scene, when Michael pops up and he's helping him, it's like, hey, Dad, me and you kind of get to do something. (laughs) We're going to go fishing, but we're going to kill together instead of fish. I, you know, it's it's a weird thing. I was in in the middle with it. I was like, it's kind of neat. But it's kind of fucking corny at the same time. And it does spank a lot of Batman and Robin. Because he's literally killing this old fucking doctor. And and then she runs inside. And then Michael, he's like, oh. He has hands on the window. And then Michael's like, da, da. <laughs> and then dad comes out of the closet and like fucking shuts it up tonight. I, I like, I'm, I'm literally torn on that. Like, that's where I'm like. Like, yeah, it was cool to see Michael fuck that shit up, and I liked it, but at the same time, I'm like, he did, he doesn't need a partner. Like, it, it almost is like, like, it's dude, Batman doesn't need Robin. I, I have mean, the perfect explanation of it. If you read that to me, if I wasn't, if I wasn't in the theater experiencing this for the first time, watching a Halloween movie do some new and fucking punk shit, like, if you read that to me, yeah. like, and you read to me what was happening in that scene, I'd be fucking... Dude, I'd be so pissed. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Stop. Please yeah. stop. D- cancel the movie right now. But generally, when you watch it and you're in the audience, like for me, at least, when I'm watching it happen, I think this is everything I would hate to see Michael Myers do. Team up with somebody. All that weird shit. But honestly, dude, when I was watching it happen, I was like, this is kind of fucking entertaining. Scene, like, I'm enjoying this. The scene flowed well. What I'm, and I'm not saying that the scene didn't flow well. It did. I just, I, I think it was the particulars of the scene is where I'm having a hard time adjusting. Because Michael doesn't need anybody to help him. Now, originally, when they, when they uh, again, when I was going with the idea that Michael is a, kind of like a psychic vampire and he was like sucking off this dude in a way, like kind of revitalizing himself, you know, uh, feeding off of his evil and making him do these things as a way of regenerating himself. Yeah. I'm like, that makes sense because you're going to keep your battery source near you. And so Michael wouldn't kill him because you're feeding him in a way. Like, you're giving him this energy. They didn't ultimately go that way. I was like, that would have been smarter because Michael is not dumb and it, like, it, like at any stretch of the imagination. So if he understands this essence, this thing inside of him, this evil needs evil to kind of survive. Mm-hmm. And he just kind of like stokes the fire in somebody else to get them to bring out their evil. Now we're getting very goddamn Confucius here. And I understand that too. Cause that's where I was like, people might be like, yeah, this is getting kind of dumb. I get that too, but I'm going with the, the plot line that I thought was going to happen in my mind, uh, uh, that they were going to use this as a way of Michael using a minion in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a, like in essence, mm-hmm. as he got stronger because he was weak. Uh, kind of Hellraiser, really. Well, yeah. But like, well, he was weak. And then using this dumb shit moron that believes he's his friend, or he had stoked this evil in him, kind of mind controlling him, and then suck all him juices dry, and then fucking come back with that, and then kill him. He's like, I don't need you anymore. Because that's what Michael would do. Michael is literally the the, the, the visage of evil. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were going to go that route. They didn't go that route. But so when they when they didn't go that route, and then I look back on that scene, I'm like, it pisses me off more. Because now it's like, is that your? What, what the fuck were you doing? Uh, I, like, were you out like on a fucking like like uh, a sunset drive? I think, it's, dude. I think it's crazy because like, so the whole Corey thing as a whole, like, 
only worked to me because Corey is a very in, I, like I found him interesting. He se- he seemed to me like a young Jake Gyllenhaal for you as uh, Aaron, Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Like I was interested in his character, what he was going through when Michael grabs him. The first scene that really just jerks your fucking Halloween asshole is when Michael grabs him. And he's like, oh yeah, and then like the, <laughs> the eyeball. That's what Michael said. <laughs> if you listen real close, he goes, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the eyeball thing happens, and when their eyeballs are meeting, and he starts to like feel his pain, and then the, and, and if it, right then you're like, oh my god! See, I didn't think he was feeling his pain. I think he was stoking the evil. It's but th- that's the beautiful part about it. There's so much, to, and that's what we're gonna get into the spoiler review and stuff like that. But like, there's so much to talk about with that. What does it mean? What was happening? I love this movie for the fact that it has that H6, that that fucking wild card. There's so much to talk about. There's so much lore added. That scene, and then also after that scene, when he, he's like, show me how to do this, Michael. And Michael's like, I'm fucking tired, dog. <laughs> he's like, all right, fuck it, here, I'll show you. And the music starts. It, yeah. was, it was done really well. It was kind of like when Matt Skiba was like, Tom DeLong, don't take my place. <laughs> Uh, but dude, when Michael starts to stab that guy, yeah. and then he starts to get like ultimate dude. warrior, he's like, "Oh yeah, I got fucking pumped." And I, I was like, "This that, is good." When yeah, because Michael, by the way, there's a really cool scene when the when the cop chases Corey into the sewer, and you see Michael like, oh. he's in the sewer pipeline, and he's like, "Well, oh. <laughs> I thought that was fucking cool. It was scary. It was kind of yeah. freaky." And then when Michael comes out and starts stabbing that motherfucker. And this guy, like, like all of a sudden, Michael is like getting rejuvenated. Like he, he just got the power of Tony Robbins, and he had listened to like workout tapes. And he's like, "Oh, dude, it was so." When you, and he was it's pretty I, fucking cool. I, it was kind of cool. And then Corey was like, "Stab him again, get it up in you." And then he was like, "Oh," and then his arms are going, "Oh, oh yeah." And it was like, and I bumped again, yeah, and I bumped it's again. Like, I said, I, I, I kind of feel like it was. Uh, I don't know, man. Like it, it was kind of, it was a little bit. It was a little weird. It was like uh, Corey weird. was like wanting him to like. It was almost homoerotic. He was like, <laughs> "Do it again, pump him again." Because uh, when when you see Michael, like he's like all like stroked out, like his arm doesn't work, and he's like, Ooh. and he looked like a fan of the opera. And then when he starts killing again, and he slices that dude's throat, and then he starts stabbing, and the more he stabs, then he's like, "Yo, ah." <laughs> like he gets like this energy uh, surge, and that's and again in that particular scene. That's the moment that I thought I was like, okay, this is what they're gonna do. Uh, they're they're trying to explain the paranormal, which I never think you should do in a Michael Myers movie. By the way, it's really risky to do that when you try to explain his. Origin. And they really never did. Well, they kind of. With his powers, like the fact that the more he kills, the more he grows. They added more questions than answers, though, which I appreciate. Well. But literally, the more he kills, the more he powerful he gets. And, like, obviously, that's what happened. I yeah. mean, he was all fucking decrepit, and then when he killed, he got big again. Oh, yeah. Like, he got that fucking fresh steroid. I got you for three minutes. That motherfucker went macho, man. <laughs> uh, but, no, uh, yeah, like, uh, so they did that, and I was like, well, that's risky, but I didn't mind it. And then I thought what they're going to do, again, and that goes back to what I originally was saying. Like, I thought Michael was going to use this kid who'd already stoked that evil. He... Almost like like a, what a vamp like if you look at like a what, what any kind of vampire classic vampire they get a minion for them and they bring them bodies yeah like I, I'm weak I need some like uh, I need some sustenance I need some milk bitch bring me my goddamn milk of magnesium and lunchables and and he and he was doing that Maybe and then funny. he was getting stronger dude and I was like I'm kind of on board with this it's, I think it's pretty cool because yeah. it showcases Michael's smarts because Michael it's still Michael but his evil is like out there infecting other people to get him to do what he needs them to do uh, but using them like puppets and then once he gets from them what he needs he disposes of them and then he's back the full on full powerful Michael Myers the full supernatural uh, gauge is filled and they didn't wind up doing that but I, I feel like they should have done that but either way uh, I think really what it derails the not even before the ending um, one of the Dude, I, I feel like this was just another... Like, it wasn't as bad as the Buster Rhymes, but it was close. When this little bitch-ass Corey runs in there, smacks the motherfucker Big in the scene. face, and says, I'm taking your mask! And, and, like, I was telling Mike, this is like when you when you think you're grown, and you tell your dad, I'm taking the truck out tonight. He's like, no, you wait. And he's like, yeah, I am. And then you have a fight. And he's like, I'm taking it, you loser alcoholic. That and he was... grabs your keys, and then when he walks out, Michael's like... Oh shit! I just got my ass <laughs> that was, beat. That was one of those scenes in this movie that was like, 
I was like, nah, man. Like, no, 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 like, 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 like watching it for the first time, dude. You can't tell me though. Like, you can't tell me. A watching it happen when Corey goes in there's like, I need your fucking mask, bro. Like, when he I laughed, it, but it was like, they're like, no, no, but like watching it as a Halloween fan, dude. You literally tensed up in your seat and you're like, oh my, what? Is, whatever you do next is gonna be really important, right? And they didn't fuck it up completely because yeah. Michael at least had some fight in him. But it was so funny. So, they went off. Like you're watching it through the fucking tube. <laughs> they went they off screen and, and then they the right came <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, for me, for you said the car thing. For me, it was like, hey, dude, let me borrow your copy of VH, The Crow on VHS. Yeah. Like, no, dude. It worked either way. <laughs> but no, dude, it, yeah, it was, it was, I was like, oh my God. And it, But then I was like, uh, <laughs> Michael was just standing there in the fucking, like, he was just standing there when he walked into, like, he was waiting on his son to come home. And then when, he's like, you've been late. Where you been at? And he's like, it doesn't matter where I've been at. I've taken the car. And then they get into a fight. But it, it <laughs> Dude, it was. I, I felt like, like it couldn't, like the the way it could have been worse is if, uh, if he'd be like not just a friend, a partner, too. <laughs> and they had done a shake hands, like a Joel Schumacher Batman Forever moment. But now, I, but no, now I will say, I thought, okay, and then I'm still on board with him for a minute. I was like, you know what? All right, that scene sucked bullshit. That that was like, that was literally like someone pissing in my oatmeal and I ate it, and then they made fun of me later on. And that could have happened. It was so entertaining. But I, I didn't thought, hate it. But like, I thought what was going to happen though was what what in my mind I was thinking like because Michael does sit up and he looks out and I thought he's unmasked again. Come on, god damn it! Yeah, but you anyway, don't even clip that shit. Anyway, so he does that. And I'm like, all right. I thought it was like here we go. Michael's smart. Michael's going to use this motherfucker to trace where Lori is, and that's why he let him do it. Like, because, you know, maybe he let him take his mask. It wasn't like he's too weak to fight off fucking Corey. Well, I was, I was upset about that at first. And, and not just that, but there's a scene before that where where Michael's weak as fuck. And at first yeah. you go, man, you, your number one fear in that moment, in both those moments, is please do not resurrection me. Please do not let Buster Rhymes walk in here though. and bitch out Michael Myers. It was close. But in this timeline, the story they're telling, it makes sense because Michael's weak. And and we also touch on that, that maybe he's not supernatural. He is like, I don't know if he's supernatural or not. Like, that's a whole well, that, discussion. That whole evil thing. That's a whole video. That whole evil thing. And that's why, know. like, that's part of why I love this fucking movie, because it asks so many questions that, that we're going to have so much fun delving deep into. But, like, there's several moments where Michael's in that cave and he's weak as shit. But you understand why, because of what he went through. So, like, you hate to see him get bitched out, right? But in the scope of what we're dealing with, it makes sense, so it's almost okay. And in this scene, it was like that. Corey walks in there, he's like, give me your fucking... I know we're friends, but it's like, here's an old man with a mask. Give me your fucking mask. And Michael's like, stop. Yeah, it was, it was kind of bad. I hated I mean, it. Michael kind of puts up a fight. And then I, look, dude, I don't want it. But Corey, it also made sense. A bitch-ass ass kid. It's, but it also made skins made skins it almost it, uh, it also made sense in the scope of the story we're telling so it's just it's another one of those wild ass moments that's like do i want this to be pure canon for halloween fuck no no but as a fan watching this taste takes take place am i excited right now am i fucking confused am i on the edge of my seat fuck yeah and does it add a million questions that's gonna be fun as fuck to talk about for the next 10 years hell yeah it does i i don't like the fact that i gotta talk about like I got to make up a story in my mind that when Michael sets up, like, no, he let him do that, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, that's it's, where it's bad. It's fun. Like, that's where it's bad, though. It's scary, it's like, but it's That's fun. Michael fucking Myers, dude. I'm like, no, he let him do that, though. Because that's like your hero. <laughs> and I know that sounds a lot about me. That's your fucking hero getting his ass whooped by a goddamn little yeah. fucking teenager. I get it. And then he's like, yeah, I let that happen. And I'm like, yeah, he let that happen, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, you didn't get the best of him. You ain't got the best of him. And it, like it's like, and, and he took his fucking mask off and he, he skedaddled with it. That's like taking his drawers. But you understand, like <laughs> the only reason that was possible is because Michael was weakened. No, but so Michael, you're like okay with it. I, no, what? No, I'm gonna in my fan fiction. Maybe. I'm gonna go like this. Michael wasn't weak. Michael killed, so he got some juice. Michael let him do that. <laughs> no, like, so he could track down to track him. Right. Like because uh, like I like I look at this movie like this. Corey was a bitch to Michael. Michael used him like a prison bitch. Mm -hmm. Track me, bitch. Like, track me to who I need to go but to. That, that being said, when Michael finally kills uh, Corey, it was 
even though it, it wasn't even a crazy kill, but it was intense. Mm. Like when I'm watching it and he's looking up at Michael and he's kind of confused about what's happening and Michael's looking down on him and that super zoomed in shot to Michael's face, it was kind of scary. Yeah. Like Michael's like, I'm going to fuck you up. You're like, you don't yeah. know what he's going to do. Like it adds so much intrigue. Like, I don't know what's going to happen next. And when Michael kills him, it's kind of fucking awesome. Well, he was already dying though. Scene. So it really right. wasn't as much. And I didn't like that scene either, by the way. It was very confusing how Corey was. By the way, how fucking confusing was it when Corey was asleep in the house on the on the blood spot? Was 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 Lori ever there? Was she there? Do I? I, I, I don't about, know. I thought about that too. Like here's it's crazy. here's the thing. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I just gotta throw this out there, dude. In some way, I felt like I was watching Revenge of the Sith. You either have the Jedi or you have the Sith way. <laughs> like he was saying, why don't you give in? Just give in to his eyes. But was she even there? I, no, she was. I don't know if she, she was actually the, there. She went through the window. No, that was another thing that I was like, so is this like some Jedi Force shit? Because it's like, well, you can be evil if you give into, like, so is it, it, so is Michael Myers Emperor Palpatine, and then this little asshole is Darth Maul, and they got to fight to find out who number one is, and then uh, Lori Strode is like Luke Skywalker. She refused the fucking Dark Force. And I get that, but also at the same time, the way that they played that scene out, the way the dialogue was all weird, and it was fast, and it was jumbled, it was like... Was she ever there? I think or she was, there. was he imagining this? And if he was imagining this, was it just because whatever happened between him and Michael in that tunnel, he was starting to lose his mind? Because when Michael grabbed him, clearly something changed. Well, I, don't no, know, you know, I don't know if you could call it possessed. No, it was, she, she was there because or, when he calls uh, uh, Allison, he literally says on the phone, your grandma threatened to kill but me. But if he saw... And then when she confronts her, she's like, oh, yeah, well... You no, Lori never admits him. to it, though. Lori uh, never... That's what I'm saying. Know. Lori never admits to it. When Allison gets all pissed off at her and throws a fit, Lori never admits to threatening him. She says it, but he, she never she admits to it. Him. So, like, I don't know if Lori was ever actually there. And maybe this is whatever happened in that tunnel between Corey and Michael... Uh, that I the when it was like no, 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 no. like you don't know. I like, think that's what you it, want to be. Maybe, but maybe Corey's starting to go crazy, and like the the, the Michael is infecting more. him. But. And the same thing happened with the dad, who by the way I think was the same guy from Seven, who was like he told me to fuck her, so I fucked her. That guy. I think it was the same guy. Hey, I think which one? The fucking dad of the kid he killed, or the kid that died. He was no, that wasn't him. Are you sure? That's what. Well, either way. Like, but it looked like him, though. And that's why, dude, this movie, like, I, I I, I really dislike certain aspects that they took, and I wouldn't have gone the same way. But goddamn, talking about, trying to do a spoiler, we're 40 minutes deep right now. Trying it's to do hard, a spoiler man. review of this, there's so much to talk about, it's almost impossible. Because we did, like, a three-hour, we could literally do a three-hour right. fucking but video. But how entertaining is that? We love Halloween 6 because of the lore and because of the crazy, is it perfect? No. But, like, we love the questions and the things that it adds to the franchise. So it actually makes me like this movie a little bit more that there's so much shit to talk about. Like, there's so much crazy shit that happens. I don't know for sure. I gotta watch it 17 more fucking times. And then, even then, we may not know exactly what the fuck was going on. Well, and that's bad, but it's also fun as fuck. What I can say, though, ultimately, though, for the for the movie itself, for the overall movie, I feel like it's a... It's a it's a solid entry. I don't. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with the movie necessarily. There are definitely uh, wrong things that they put in the movie. I mean, 100. percent We we went over a few of them, but I don't think, for me personally, I don't think this movie is as bad as Resurrection, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two, Halloween Five, even because those movies. Halloween Five was a cash grab. I mean, there's no fucking doubt whatsoever. I mean, you could say, well, Michael was in it more, yeah, but Michael was like a goddamn. He was like a, a a toy store fucking mascot at that point, mm. like he or a Disney World fucking. Oh, I'm this, this I'm was, Mickey Mouse. This I'm was gonna, in no way. You no, can, you cannot there's no say way. this movie was a cash grab. This movie was an auteur's view right. of the movie, whether you like it or not. It still is. I feel like overall in the uh, in the in the uh, franchise of Halloween, this is a solid entry. I don't I, I don't I'm not gonna rate this movie. Super high, and you know, if we do a ranking for it, it won't be like super, but it'll be high enough. It's gonna beat out for me anyway. Resurrection, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Uh, uh, you know, I I could I, I could say this on record. Uh, Resurrection, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Um, for me, Halloween Five, and probably H Two O. And I know people love H Two O, but I don't like H Two O as much as everybody yeah. else. And see, that's another uh, controversial thing. But here's the thing: this movie start for me. It starts off really strong with a really unique approach to what they want to do with Michael and how they want to end the series. And I think ultimately uh, they fold their fucking hand. I feel like they had quads. 
They, they, they fucking flip quads on the river, and they're like, yeah, I can't do that. I'm going to fold. I, because the ending of this movie and, and, and the promise that could have been something really unique... Um, and and could have I, like honest to God could have tied in with mm-hmm. the curse of Michael Myers with the adaption of the book with the uh, with the uh, you know the, the paganism that you know we, we put this curse on a child and shit like that it could have tied in and done crazy they just ultimately uh, wind up doing a very standard I, again I'm an unceremonious end mm-hmm. and and I and that that's really sad to me because I, I you know what I what I I don't know why I don't know if Jamie Lee Curtis said that or something. Oh, there's going to be tears. I, the only thing, there was no tears. I was just like, nobody cut onions around me. I The only thing I was sad about was like, there was a missed opportunity. Because there could have been that moment. I mean, you could have watched a movie and cried at the end of it and, and to, to, to know that this 40-year history was coming to an end if you'd had Lori going out with Michael at the end of and then had these flashbacks happen. Yeah. I, and you know what? Like, there's, it's crazy. Like, honestly, it's, it's wild, dude. The fact that we're this deep uh, forty plus minutes talking. We're about not even touched it. To, yeah, we not even, like touched the cusp yeah, of all it. the stuff that's here. It makes me actually like the movie a lot more. Because and here's why: because if this was if this was to be if this was a franchise that was still on one timeline, and this was supposed to be the movie that answered all the questions, which is how I feel a lot of the general audience saw this movie, and yeah. and, and that's why I think a lot of the hate comes from. They think it's supposed to be. The thing that wraps it all up and ties it up for good. That's stupid. I under, <laughs> if I if I thought that, I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, hundred percent. But as a person who understands that this franchise is gonna go on and and we're just adding to the lore and we're adding to all that shit, I actually love this movie more and more the more I talk about it. Is it the way I would have done it? No. If you told me I'm making Halloween ends and a movie called Halloween Ends, I would have done everything different. Yeah. Everything different. 100%. But knowing this franchise is going to continue, and all the fun shit they've given us to talk about over the next fucking ten goddamn years, and how this could have gone, and the Corey character, and this and that, and and the million things we haven't even talked about tonight, I really, really am happy this entry exists. I think this overall, at the end of the day, as long as Halloween continues successfully, yeah. this entry is going to be a very, very important and successful entry into the franchise. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that because. We can't even begin to touch on the main things we haven't even talked well, about let me, yet. Let me add on to what you're saying. Um, you know, and we shit uh, diarrhea all over all the time. Rob Zombie's Halloween too. But, you know, to be honest with you, man, and, and to be honest with all of you, uh, I'm glad it exists. He disrespected the characters, and that's the difference. I'm glad it exists, though, because it's another Halloween movie. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, even the shittiest fucking movie is still worthy of, like, uh, attention because it adds on... To an ever-growing series, and uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, not not series. Well, no, a series. It, it adds on to the lore. It adds on to the the spice of of the series. It keeps it relevant, is what I'm saying. And and to be honest with you, man, tonight being in the theater and and listening to that music, the John Carpenter original music, uh, the opening, I was like, this is fucking, this is incredible. I'm literally it's sitting in feeling. 2022. Yeah. watching a movie on on the big screen and the Halloween theme music is coming on and I'm watching a Halloween movie. Mm. To me, that's cool as fuck. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we're all going to disagree on everything. I mean, it doesn't matter what movie. It could be Halloween 1. And we're all going to disagree about what they could have done right and what they could have done better and what, what I would have done and what you would have done and what Mike would have done. At the end of the day, I, I'm glad that there it, there is so much interest though of all these Hollywood directors or writers that want to get on board and write mm. their own tale. Because if that didn't exist, if there was nobody interested or nobody cared, that movie would be dead. That movie would die. And the last thing you'd see about Halloween was Michael Myers versus Pinhead. Would have been the last fucking thing that you would have talked about with Michael Myers. So, at the end of the day, this is a. It didn't hit on everything for me. It wasn't perfect at all. It's still it, it's a solid movie. I enjoyed myself for most of the film. I don't think the film is perfect by any any stretch, uh, and there are big glaring problems with the film. But overall, I still had a good time watching the film, and I think that's what any Halloween fan wants. Mm-hmm. Just go have fun, man. If you if you can go watch a movie and have fun with it, fuck it. 
It's good. Yeah. It's almost it's a blessing that this is the last of this trilogy because they don't have to follow up on any of these ideas. They don't have to round these no. out. We can go anywhere we want in the franchise from here. And in that aspect, it's a very interesting. You know what? Let me let me jump on one, let me let me jump on one thing that you were saying, uh, or, or 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 just like uh, addendum one thing. Um, and I, and I agree. I, I do I? I know this is going to sound crazy, uh, and I, and maybe it won't be the same way, but. Do you remember back in the day, and, and, and we said it when we reviewed this movie, when we first reviewed this movie, and then our opinion changed, Friday the 13th Part 5, right? It wasn't Jason, right? And they even made a little cheeky thing where they put the blue thing. It wasn't Jason. And, and when that movie came out, people lost their fucking panties. They're like, that's not fucking Jason. And also Halloween 3 with no Michael. How dare you fuck my mom without asking me. And they didn't even, the thing is, they didn't even do that here. We we, we were no, no, afraid like, but, they were going to copycat kill Michael. They didn't. They kind of tag teamed him. And he, he I hated that. that and I, and didn't, I didn't mind it. But I didn't like that Corey got the best kills either. He got the best kills. He got the fucking goddamn blowtorch in the mouth. And he got the DJ thing. And I'm like, those are the awesomest kills in the fucking But one film. of the biggest things I want to say about this is that I'm shocked to admit when Corey was Michael Myers, I actually didn't mind it. I still felt like I was watching Michael Myers on the screen. When Michael wasn't in the movie, I still felt his presence. And I cannot believe I'm saying that, but like when like when Sartain put you on the mask. You lost yourself. No, like when Sartain put on the mask, you shit your pants and you go, oh my God, what's happening? Mm. But when Corey was killing as Michael Myers, I still kind of got that same vibe that it was Michael Myers doing it. And maybe I, that was the possession angle or what? That's I don't what know. I was going. If it had, if they had gone that route where Michael, not even possessing, but just uh, influencing him, yeah, and he was still him, and he was just using up that kid's body, I I think there could have been, there was a lot of potential that was yeah. like uh, unspoken in this movie. But either way, um, it's still it's like, dude, as a Halloween fan, and we all are Halloween fans here, by the way. Go see this movie, yeah, dude. Go watch this so movie. Much it's not. It's not a bad movie. Don't let. Don't let Twitter or or, or mm. reviews on Reddit or wherever the fuck you're gonna read your reviews. Don't let that deter you. It's a, it's a good movie, and you're gonna enjoy yourself. I guarantee it. And um, you might get upset, but you're still gonna have fun. Remember in uh, remember in the army now with Pauly Shore when he was like. It's got to be Armani. Oh, it's J.C. Penny. But at least you wear it well, sir. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like, hey, it's still a suit. And I, dude, you're wearing I, it well. I'll say this: if you're saying I'm not going to go watch this movie because I'm upset about kills or I don't like what's going on, trust me, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because whether you like what they did or not, this movie is the most talk aboutable movie. It's the most pick apartable movie. It's mm -hmm. the most. Uh, it's the most discussable movie of the entire franchise yeah, it and it's not all terrible it's not cheap it's not like resurrection cheap or it's not like hateful like h2 was yeah they didn't go in it's here like trying. thinking like yeah balloons and shit yeah. like fuck it it's still trying to add to the lore of michael myers so whether you like their decisions or not it is so fascinating to talk about what those decisions could mean yeah and the more and more i talk about this movie the more and more fascinated i am with this this is an important fucking entry into the halloween franchise uh, well, I think you hit so, the I, th I think you hit the nail on the head there. You, it's a fascinating movie. Yeah, like it's not like, and it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, hundred percent. It's fascinating though. You can watch it, and there's going to be you can watch it with uh, you can watch it with ten people, and everyone's going to come away with yeah. a different like uh, opinion about it. Dude, like hundred percent. I've never done one of these spoiler reviews that we do, and at the end of it, been like, dude. We literally don't have time to talk about everything. Like there's there's a fucking three million hours, things. At least three hours. Yeah, we've not even touched the tip of. I've never had a movie like that. So to me, that tells me this is something special and weird. And by the way, whatever we missed, and we missed a lot. Mm -hmm. Monday night live. Let me get in there. Meet us in the fucking octagon and let's talk about it. To hey, and together. by the way, uh, David Gordon Green. Fuck you. <laughs> you crazy you asshole. Bitch. Come on our show. You scared? <laughs> you scared? You got a little wiener? Oh, fuck Come on me. here. Hey. David, we, come we, in here. We love your fucking faces, guys. We'll see you guys Monday night to talk some I'm shit. I'm kidding, but I'm not. Woo. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick. And I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box. Or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, yeah.